I was sick in bed, which caused a huge delay in preparing for Christmas. While I was busily working, my husband Oliver had gone out somewhere. Entering Oliver's room, I noticed a bag sticking out of a drawer. I picked it up. Inside the bag was an SD card. Seeing it placed with a message card that read for Oliver, I had a bad feeling. Just as Oliver returned home, I waited for him to take a shower and sneaked back into his room to check the contents on the computer. What is this? I was shocked at the footage. At the same time, anger surged through me. I'm going to divorce him. Determined, I gathered our relatives at our home the next day. Now, please look at this. As my voice caught the attention of the relatives and Oliver towards the TV, I pressed the play button. The scene that appeared left our relatives speechless and Oliver pale. Why, why? To Oliver, who turned to me in disbelief, I smiled and handed him the divorce papers. I will never forgive him, I'll make him regret this. My name is Sophia. A 34-year-old housewife. My parents passed away early, but thanks to a large inheritance and the kindness of the neighbors, I could pursue my dream job as a preschool teacher. I resigned from teaching when I was 30. To marry my childhood friend, Oliver. The catalyst for our relationship was my parents' accidental death. Being a high school student and facing college entrance exams, I didn't want to move. I was determined to attend the college my parents had supported. However, my relatives, eyeing the large inheritance left by my parents, tried to take me in. Almost strangers to me, their intentions felt creepy. Oliver, my husband-to-be, shooed these relatives away when I was vulnerable from losing my parents. Oliver, the eldest son of our neighboring family, was like an older brother to me. In front of the relatives, he declared, We'll take care of her. We have permission from my parents, so no complaints. Sophia will be my wife in the future. Surprised by Oliver's words, who I had always seen as a brother, he turned out to be serious, confessing his feelings later. His earnest nature and the security he provided became my solace, and we started dating. Oliver always prioritized me, and eventually, I genuinely fell in love with him. When I became comfortable in my job as a preschool teacher, he proposed. I meant what I said when we were students. My feelings haven't changed. I will make you happy, marry me. Absolutely. Overwhelmed, I accepted his proposal with tears. Telling his parents, they rejoiced, and we celebrated that night. After marrying and two years of marriage, I retired to become a housewife. Oliver had requested me to become a housewife, something that triggered this change. Though it was sad to leave my dream job, I decided to focus on having children and use my experience in parenting. Oliver has a younger sister. Emma, my sister-in-law, was my classmate since kindergarten. She was also my best friend and colleague at the childcare center. Emma had mixed feelings about me marrying Oliver. That is because she and Oliver don't get along. Oliver has always been kind to you, but unreasonable to me. Really? Absolutely. I often listened without arguing, as Emma insisted. According to Emma, she was delighted to have me as a relative. But not as Oliver's wife. Pretending to lament, she often complained about marrying her disliked brother. From my perspective, though Oliver might be somewhat cold to Emma, it was clear they were still connected by blood. However, Emma didn't seem to think so, often showing dissatisfaction when I suggested this. Sophia, you say that because you don't know Oliver's true face. I wonder. I always responded, doubting Emma's claims. Looking back, I regret not paying more attention, but at that time, I thought it was just sibling dynamics. But even after five years of marriage, we didn't have any children. Then, I noticed a gradual change in Oliver's attitude. At first, he complained about our housework being split equally since I became a housewife, and soon, I was doing 90% of it. Without kids and just relaxing at home all day, you could at least do a bit more housework, right? These unkind words, something the old Oliver would never say, hurt me, but I accepted them as my duty as a housewife. From there, Oliver started to push more household responsibilities on me, 
citing my role as a housewife. One day, while visiting my in-laws, Oliver suddenly started belittling me, laughing. Sophia's cooking is just awful. And her cleaning is so sloppy, can't she do something about it? The living room fell silent, but Oliver didn't notice. In fact, he began to mock me even more. The laundry is also carelessly done, she hardly works at all for a housewife. I could feel Emma getting irritated beside me. Isabella, my mother-in-law, smiled, but her eyes weren't laughing. I had to say something. I might be a bit absent-minded at times, so maybe Oliver finds me lacking in some ways. But there's a way to say things. Emma glared at Oliver as she spoke. Oliver glared back, and the living room atmosphere turned tense. Then Lucas as my father-in-law began to speak calmly. A husband should help with his wife's shortcomings. Besides, Sophia always helps us out a lot. Oliver, discontented, kept quiet at Lucas's words. Emma was still angry, but Isabella calmed her down. The mood was ruined because of Oliver's words. I tried to lighten the mood, clapping my hands and smiling. Hey! I made a cake, would you like to have some? Sophia's cakes are delicious! I'm so happy, let's eat! Emma's mood brightened instantly, and I felt relieved. Then Isabella, Emma, and I moved to the kitchen. Sorry about Oliver earlier. We know how hard you always work, Sophia. Don't push yourself too much. Isabella, thank you. Isabella's kind words almost brought me to tears. Returning to the living room, Oliver sat turned away, looking more upset than before. I brought the cake. I don't want it. But it's your favorite pumpkin cake. I said I don't want it. As Oliver yelled, the plate with the cake disappeared from my hands. Looking down, the smashed cake was stuck to the floor. Oliver! Apologize to Sophia! It's her fault for forcing it on me! Oliver, though looking confused, refused to apologize to me. I was a little saddened, he used to apologize immediately in the past. That's awful. Sophia, you should divorce him. What? Don't be ridiculous. It's not your decision to make. Emma and Oliver started bickering, ignoring me, and their argument heated up. Unlovable women can't get married. When I get married is none of your business. I desperately tried to calm down the shouting Emma. Oliver, looking at us in disdain, laughed and left, saying he was going out for a drink. Oliver's been going out a lot lately. Yeah, he never tells me where he's going. Don't worry too much, I'll ask around too. I thanked the ever-kind Isabella. My in-laws always doted on me, treating me like their own daughter. They scolded me when I was wrong, feeling like a second set of parents. Part of the reason I married Oliver was because of my relationship with my in-laws. The thought of becoming a family with my beloved in-laws and Emma made me happy. But it was true that I still loved Oliver. However, since then, Oliver's treatment of me became increasingly harsh. I'm going out. Again? Where have you been going every weekend recently? Anywhere I want. After a while, Oliver started going out somewhere every weekend. Sometimes even staying overnight, but he stubbornly refused to tell me where. Moreover, he was always angry, and our usual conversations diminished. I once asked if I had done something wrong. But I never got a satisfying answer. Amidst this, as Christmas approached, I fell ill. Isabella came to help at our house. It took about a week to fully recover, and I had to start preparing for Christmas slowly, dragging my heavy body around, since Oliver wouldn't help. I was sick in bed, which caused a huge delay in preparing for Christmas. While I was busily working, Oliver had gone out somewhere. Entering Oliver's room, I noticed a bag sticking out of a drawer. I picked it up. Inside the bag was an SD card. Seeing it with a message card that read for Oliver, I had a bad feeling. Just as Oliver returned home, I waited for him to take a shower and sneaked back into his room to check the contents on the computer. What is this? I was speechless at the footage. At the same time, anger surged through me. 
I'm going to divorce him. Determined, I gathered our relatives at our in-law's house the next day. Now, please look at this. As my voice directed the relatives and Oliver towards the TV, I pressed the play button. The scene that appeared left our relatives speechless, and Oliver turned pale. Why, why? As Oliver looked at me in disbelief, I smiled and handed him the divorce papers. I will never forgive him, I'll make him regret this. Seeing the divorce papers, Oliver's face turned even bluer. Wait, hold on. Divorce is too sudden. What are you talking about? After seeing that video, there's no other option but divorce. Oliver felt silent at my words. The content of the SD card was a childbirth scene. Of course, it wasn't mine. A young woman was struggling through labor. At first, I wondered why such a thing existed, but then I recognized the man beside the woman. It was unmistakably Oliver, stroking the woman's head and encouraging her. Keep going! I couldn't mistake Oliver's voice, having known him since childhood. This is... Uh, I was just standing in, it's not what you think. Don't lie to me. I turned up the volume on the TV. Then a conversation between the woman and Oliver filled the living room. Evelyn! It's almost time! Our child is about to be born! Oliver, yes, I'll keep going! After their conversation, a baby's cry could be heard. Then Oliver kissed the woman named Evelyn, thanking her repeatedly. You did great! You worked so hard! I did it for you, my love. I love you too. Oh, Evelyn. I can't wait to live with you and our child. Me either. After saying that and kissing again, the video stopped. The relatives in the living room were stunned, and my in-laws and Emma were visibly trembling with anger. Well, after watching this, no one would believe he was just standing in as a proxy. This is... I just got carried away, it was just an act of a father. Lucas is usually a calm person, suddenly stepped forward and slapped Oliver. Oliver held his cheek in shock. Lucas was a gentleman who only got angry when necessary, and had never resorted to physical action. Everyone was surprised by this. Do you understand what you're saying? Don't you feel sorry for Sophia? But this is... Even then, Oliver tried desperately to explain himself. Emma spoke up in a calm voice. I've always disliked you, but I thought I could maintain a relationship if you cherished my best friend. But someone who hurts my important friend can't be considered family. I'm cutting ties with you. At Emma's words, Oliver's face turned red with anger. You, a younger sister, are so presumptuous. If you want to cut ties, go ahead. It's a relief. Then I'll cut ties too. Eh? Oliver froze at Isabella's words, said with a smile. He tries to hide it, but Oliver is quite the mama's boy. I like Isabella too, so it never really bothered me, but to be honest, I didn't really like how he clung to her, even nearing 40. Oliver seemed bewildered by Isabella's declaration of cutting ties. But, I'm the eldest son, right? Mom, you're joking about cutting ties, right? Do you think I'm someone who would joke in this situation? Ah, uh, no. Isabella never lost her smile. That made it even scarier, and the whispering relatives straightened up and began listening quietly to her. Isabella continued in a calm and steady voice. Don't worry about us. After all, we have Sophia. If she remarries someone wonderful and has children, they will be our grandchildren. What? If she divorces, she's a stranger, right? Not just Isabella, but Lucas, Emma, and I all sighed heavily at Oliver's response. In fact, after marrying, I had been legally adopted by my in-laws. It wasn't necessary, but my own relatives, eyeing my parents' inheritance, often pressured me into an adoption agreement. Your parents' inheritance is yours to use as you wish. But to protect you from those relatives, why don't you consider being legally adopted by us? After my parents passed away, my in-laws never asked me for money. 
I had prepared tuition and living expenses for my inheritance and gave the living expenses to my in-laws. However, they didn't touch it, saying it was important money, and when I got a job, they even added a celebration gift and returned it to me. I initially refused, but they insisted, so I gratefully accepted. Because of this history, I trusted Isabella's words. That's why I consulted with Oliver and got legally adopted right after our marriage. It seemed Oliver had completely forgotten about it. Uh, no, but even if I was adopted, I'm the eldest son, the real child. That's right. I have a child. This house is mine. Oliver, as if he had remembered something important, was met with laughter from Isabella. What are you talking about? As of today, you are no longer my child. Well, legally you'll still be my child, but we'll have to renounce your inheritance. Oliver was speechless at the decisive words. Tears streamed down his face from the rejection of his beloved Isabella. I added to Oliver's misery. By the way, do you know why I called everyone here today? Eh? Oliver looked at me, puzzled. His tear-stained face was dirty. I felt a bit pathetic for having loved such a pitiful man. Christmas was always celebrated at my in-law's house. They were landowners in the area, with many relatives nearby. There was no other place that could accommodate our large family of nearly 50 people. But this time, we limited the number of people, having only families with children come from the relative side. So, there were only about 20 people in the living room, half of the usual number. It seemed Oliver hadn't even noticed that. After I pointed it out, he finally realized. There are no children? But I hear crying. Are they in another room? Oh, actually, we have a guest today. Please, come in. At my words, Emma stood up and opened the door at the back. There stood Evelyn, confidently with a baby in her arms. Evelyn stood there, holding the baby. Her demeanor saying she belonged and was welcomed. Nice to meet you, Isabella. I'm Evelyn. This is Liam, our son, the fruit of my love with Oliver. Evelyn said this cheerfully, but Isabella frowned. Though behind a door, she must have heard the conversation. But then I noticed the earphones in Evelyn's hands. Were you listening to music in the next room? Yeah, I was bored. Evelyn's attitude towards Isabella was starkly indifferent. She acted as if she was the rightful wife, and I was irritated, but realized she would soon be. Do you know why you were invited today? Eh? Isn't it because you're getting a divorce? And then I'll be Oliver's wife. We have Liam too, so it's a celebration, right? Her naive thinking made me sigh. In this atmosphere, thinking it's a celebration is just unbelievable. Oliver was frozen by the suddenness of it all, but seeing Evelyn's cluelessness seemed to bring him back to reality. Evelyn, we're in the middle of a difficult conversation. I'll contact you later, just wait a little longer. Eh? I can't wait anymore. Write the divorce papers now. Evelyn said this, handing a pen to Oliver. Then she looked at me, smirking in a mocking way. Uh, Sophia, was it? Thank you for your service until today. From now on, I will be the one receiving Oliver's love. Even with her triumphant tone, I just found it outright creepy. Since I saw that video of the childbirth scene, my love for Oliver is completely lost. I don't need his love, even if he begged me to take it. But to Evelyn, it seemed like I was regretful. Sorry about that. Oliver says I have firmer skin and am prettier to hold than you. He said you're like a skinny chicken. Evelyn laughed dismissively, with Oliver awkwardly trying to stop her. The onlooker's eyes were cold towards the two of them. I decided to respond with a smile and addressed Evelyn's comment. No, no, thank you for keeping him company. I don't need him anymore, so please take him. Evelyn's eyebrows twitched slightly at my words. She seemed about to say something, but I ignored her and continued. Well, you're getting a man who's about to be disowned, lose his house and job, and become poor. Eh? Evelyn's face clouded over. She probably thought that after Oliver and I divorced, she would stay in this house. 
While thinking how she would have known otherwise if she had listened earlier, I continued to smile at Evelyn. Oliver, wait. Sophia's the one leaving, right? This is Oliver's house, right? I'm becoming your wife, right? You said I could be the housewife. Evelyn confronted Oliver. Oliver looked uncomfortable and avoided her gaze. Oliver, look at me. What are we going to do? I quit my job, remember? You said Liam could stay with Isabella and we'd live in luxury. Evelyn started to freak out, scratching her hair. Startled by her shouting, Liam also began to cry, his cries echoing in the living room. I reluctantly took Liam from Evelyn and held him. He must be about four months old, just starting to hold his head up, and he was very cute. When I gently rocked him, he calmed down and fell asleep again. Relieved, I noticed Evelyn glaring at me. Give him back! That's my and Oliver's child! The grandchild of this house! He just fell asleep, so please don't raise your voice. While I was speaking, Evelyn snatched Liam back from me and returned him to the baby carrier. Liam woke up for a moment, but fell asleep again as Evelyn rocked him. I looked at her, relieved. Evelyn was glaring at me as if I were her sworn enemy. You think you can just take Liam away? You're useless. A woman who can't get pregnant should leave this house. At Evelyn's words, I realized Oliver hadn't told her about that incident. It was about why I quit my job as a preschool teacher. Evelyn, didn't Oliver tell you why we didn't have children? I don't know. Isn't it because you're not loved? Evelyn said this, looking triumphant. As if she was superior as a woman. But that didn't matter to me. Oliver was pale-faced in the background, but I continued, revealing the truth. Oliver, I've always been unable to have children. Eh? Evelyn's momentum stopped abruptly, as if it were a lie. The surrounding relatives were also stunned. Actually, I quit my job after having a miscarriage. I wanted children so badly, I went for a checkup for the first time when I tried to conceive. Oliver also had tests done with me. The results showed no issues with me, but Oliver had a condition making it difficult for him to have children. It wasn't impossible, but a natural conception was highly unlikely. The pregnancy we had was a miracle, but it ended due to genetic issues. I was sad, but wanted to try again. Oliver felt the same, so we started fertility treatments. Fortunately, there was still plenty of inheritance left, so I quit my job on Oliver's suggestion, to focus on my health. However, we saw no success with the treatments, and when we started considering adoption, Oliver became reluctant. Looking back, he probably started his affair during our treatments, and Evelyn's pregnancy came to light around the time we talked about adoption. Evelyn turned pale upon hearing this and looked at Oliver. So, Evelyn, is Liam really Oliver's child? It's not impossible, right? Our love. Her talking about love at this point was just absurd. I smiled and said again. That's why I said, natural conception is almost impossible. But, but. Evelyn was flustered, trying to make excuses. Emma cut her off. Stop lying. You're my friend's wife, right? What? Oliver looked at Emma, wide-eyed. Emma nodded at me and showed Evelyn her mobile phone screen. It showed Evelyn and Liam, a man, and a four-year-old girl I didn't know. I had contacted Emma after watching the video the day before. Emma recognized Evelyn from the photo on SNS, belonging to a man she knew. I knew it was Evelyn by her name and face. We work at the same place and talk often. You're married? Oliver asked, but Evelyn didn't answer. Her expression confirmed Emma's words were true. It was a shotgun wedding, right? No talk of divorce, and this photo says Liam is that man's child. Ah, uh, no. True love, huh? Pretending your husband's child is another man's, to switch to a richer man. Is it the money you love? Emma looked down on Evelyn with disdain. Evelyn, red-faced and shaking, didn't know how to respond and just looked down. By the way, I've called that man, he'll be here soon. No! 
It was just a moment of weakness. Please don't tell my husband. It's too late for that. At Emma's words, the doorbell rang, and Evelyn collapsed in despair. A relative opened the door, and Evelyn's husband, Henry, came in. He saw Evelyn and immediately shouted in anger. You've been cheating on me? What were you thinking? It's not like that. It's a misunderstanding. I heard everything on the phone. Realizing there was no escape, Evelyn froze in tears. Henry took Liam from her and stood up. Then apologized to us. My wife has caused you a lot of trouble. We will divorce. Wait, I don't want a divorce. Henry looked down on Evelyn coldly. You promised to stop after the affair three years ago. And you continued. I'll raise the child. You won't see him again. We were shocked by Henry's words. I couldn't believe that even though he had noticed it once, he continued to do it behind the scenes. Such audacity to claim a momentary lapse. Hmm, three years ago, huh? No, Sophia, it's not like that. What's different? Going around marking your territory elsewhere? At my words, Oliver just trembled, barely moving his mouth. I'm not usually one to get angry. But Emma once told me it's scary when I do. I'd hardly ever been angry with Oliver, so he seemed surprised by my attitude. I'm disappointed in you. I can't believe you've been betraying your family for so long. I tried to get you and Emma to reconcile, but it looks like I was the one who couldn't see clearly. Emma nodded as if to say, finally you understand. Oliver was stunned by my straightforwardness. I'll be asking for compensation. And of course, child support. Eh? I touched my stomach. I had been keeping it a secret, except from Emma, planning to announce it at Christmas. I was pregnant. The reason I'd been feeling unwell recently was morning sickness. After entering the stable period, I planned to surprise my parents and Oliver. The artificial insemination worked. It's truly your child. I kept quiet because I didn't want to get your hopes up and then disappoint you. So, so. Oliver collapsed, overwhelmed by my words. Evelyn, too, seemed drained of all energy to argue after hearing about my pregnancy and her own impending divorce. Then, please fill out the divorce papers. I said this and handed Oliver a pen. Then I left the house first with Emma. By now, Oliver must be getting glared at by the in-laws while filling out the divorce papers. Feeling refreshed after saying everything I wanted, I enjoyed a leisurely tea party with Emma. Later, Oliver and I finalized our divorce. Since his job was with a family company, he was fired due to this incident and ended up penniless and out of the house. Evelyn got divorced too and initially demanded money from Oliver. But seeing his situation, she quickly disappeared. In the end, Oliver had been working in a rundown snack bar to pay for the alimony and child support, but rumors have it that he was caught by some bad customers and taken away. I know about this because Emma, laughing about the fleeting nature of true love, told me. It was information from Henry, Evelyn's ex-husband. Lately, he's been going out more with his children, and it seems that Oliver's story comes up in their conversations. Henry, in fact, was the one Emma had a crush on during her student days. Though he reciprocated her feelings, he married Evelyn when she got pregnant. Emma denies it, but her blushing suggests that maybe, just maybe, spring is near for her. After Oliver left, my in-laws were initially down, but they recovered while I was busy with pregnancy preparations. Now they dote on their grandchild, becoming loving grandparents. At first, they were hesitant, feeling guilty towards me, but eventually, they began treating me like their real daughter again. Living together since birth, Emma jokes about how it's hard to tell who is the real daughter now. As for me, I gave birth to a beautiful baby girl without any trouble. She's a very cute girl. I hope she grows up to be bright and cheerful like Emma. My friend and now sister, who I admire. Sophia. She won't stop crying. Okay, I'm coming. I hear my daughter's cries and Emma's troubled voice from the living room. Smiling, I responded and left the balcony. 
Outside, the sky is clear and cloudless. A future full of promises awaits us. Just like this bright blue sky.